15 years ago is 2003. Uh, 2003, I was um, self-employed uh, in a practice called Studio 505. It was just me and a little, actually I was, I was skiving off my fiance, living, you know, working out of her office because uh, I'd just finished on Federation Square. October 2002, I left there. Um, and hunted around for a year and the first project that we won was actually the World Expo Pavilion for DFAT in Japan in the 2005 World Expo, which we won early in 2003. And um, so the sectors that I've been working in are myriad. We, I, at the end of Fed Square, we came off the back of, you know, New Museum and the Exhibition Centre and a bunch of big public buildings, which is where I cut my teeth, Federation Square and the like doing a little pavilion that was temporary was quite an interesting change, but it was a big enough job to say we want to do something else. And the sectors that we really started in were facades, art facades, fancy character driven cut metal things in China and Singapore and all around the world, um, including here down at Royal Domain Towers, the facade that we did there, we, we, we did because somebody had seen what we did in Expo and said, hey, can we, can we have something like that on our car park? Um, have the sectors changed? Not really. Student accommodation is probably a new sector, uh, but it's not really a different thing. It's just a different kind of product in residential, somewhere between a hotel and a, and a home. There's, we're working now in the last couple of years more than we ever have before in master planning. So new suburbs and sub suburban residential subdivisions, things like that which we really like doing because it lets us kind of put some of the sustainability thinking and aspirational thinking behind the environment into that because it's the thing I hate the most. I don't know, you've been to Point Cook and you've been out into, the, into those places that have been, um, that are the sort of the, the flat version of what's happened with one bedroom, 30 square meter apartments in Elizabeth Street. Um, and we were asked to look at a project out there and, and the, I guess the imperative was, even though it's the thing that I hate the most about human beings is that we spread like this kind of Borg scale over the place. If I just go, no, I hate that and shut my eyes and go back to the fancy ass architecture, is that really responsible or not? Or if I'm being asked to look at this problem, what could I do? what sort of design thinking could we bring to bear on it and actually change it. So that's been really interesting because there have been opportunities to do that. Uh, there's a lot of resistance in council for, different, for doing something differently because everybody loves business as usual, but business as usual, I think, can't happen anymore. I think that's probably the biggest change. In the last 15 years, there's been an awakening that business as usual doesn't work and everybody is interested in differentiating themselves, in looking at the first principles of what they're doing. We try to attract clients who are looking for that, who are aware that change, change is coming and, and try to engage with design thinking to leverage and harness that change to, to, to their purpose a little bit. I think it will take a lot less time than, fifth, than another 15 years to disrupt that particular model. I think that you already see that in some of the developers like Fraser's property group who are embedding their own sustainability divisions in what they do and they're, or even companies like Dackland, like big large land players are already aware that they need to be thinking about water and energy biosensitive urban design. In fact, you don't, it, it, it's probably the odd case now that you have a submission that hasn't considered them. Um, so I think apartment design with, is the regulations and the, the recent, you know, better apartment design guidelines and all of those sorts of things. And in New South Wales, SEP, SEP 65, those regulations are always gonna lag behind the market a little bit. Here they, surged ahead of the market because the market was ultimately an overseas investor market that we were trying to shift. People who were buying apartments weren't living in them and so they didn't really care what the quality of the apartments was. I think that the um, regulation pegs the 
minimum compliance, but the differentiation for apartment developments, particular residential, now is for bigger spaces, more gardens, more 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 amenity, more healthy aspects to them, and that's ultimately good for the environments that you put those buildings into. It's better for the people who live in them. Uh, it's better as a design outcome. Uh, you don't necessarily get any more fees for it. <laughs> so there's always, they're always being squeezed there because the building's costing more now to make. The prices are going up a little bit, but there's also a differentiated market that people are looking for difference in. So I think that that change is going to embed itself a lot in, in, a, in a faster and faster way. We've been doing a lot of research in, into cross-laminated timber, you know, the engineered wood, which is naturally sequestering carbon into it. And you can stand on a box and be a zealot and say, you've got to build in timber every day of the week. But if you, if you design something so that it has to be timber, it's always going to be judged as an environmental building. And we're much more interested in designing things so that they could be wood, so that the market and the price point of it and the speed of it and the safety and the simplicity, oh, and the environmental is, is the driver. So that we don't have to be zealots. We just say, well, you could use concrete or you could use steel or you could use timber. It's in the code, you can, you're allowed to. It's just that the timber happens to be 20% faster and 10% cheaper. And developers generally are driven by money. And so the more you can get systems to talk for themselves based on money, the easier it is to get them accepted into buildings. So money's always going to drive that stuff. And if you can't get the money for the product, you've got to change the product. So I think that change is going to happen pretty quickly. 15 years ago, I was going out a lot more. <laughs> I would get my inspirations at rather odd times of the evening. Um, my inspirations now come still, I think, ultimately from the same place, but in different circumstances. So I get my, my ideas flow um, still with excitement, but excitement and thinking in the garden now, not in the, not you know, on the dance floor. Oh, those kinds of differences. Um, the ideas that we produce as a studio, it's it's interesting because ultimately you need to be able to get everybody thinking freshly about things. So we do a lot more skis studio work now than we would have done 15 years ago when it was literally just me going, here's the idea, mm -hmm. let's do this thing. Um, that still happens a little bit, but we go, hey, here's an idea, and hopefully others are coming in and going, well, here's a different idea, and here's another idea, and we generally all together can go, hey, why don't we take, why don't we shape this out of what's coming to the table? Um, that's still good. I think ideas still come from a strange place. They're never, they, they're intuitive for me, they kind of, I'm presented with a problem and this thing comes in and goes, oh, that was a pen 1.0 and I do a scribble. And they're still coming through the pen. That's where they're coming from. Then. They're also being challenged, I think, by the kind of questions we're being asked differently. Although the first job I won 15 years ago was a World Expo and we just finished doing a submission for the World Expo 2020 15 years later. So we've got a... The 15 years ago, I did a scribble and put it on a, in a Word document and sort of posted it to someone. And this year, it's a 200-page render of schedules. <laughs> totally different scale of thing, even though it's an identical kind of project with exactly the same brief. It's kind of like odd. It's probably a good measure of how much things have changed because you looked at that first submission and you looked at this submission. Um, that submission was me. This submission is 15 people and practices in Dubai and engineers I've known for 20 years and services consultants and grown-ups. <laughs> um, the primary difference in the, in the way my life is now is that I'm surrounded by a different crew of people and that everyone's grown up and you know there's kids and there's staff and there's all of this kind of um, context to it, which is um, it's good, it's, it's challenging, but it's also, it gives us much, much, much broader capacity. It's not just one guy going, yeah, I got an idea. 
it's actually it's now like you know oh there's this idea and that idea and this idea and let's no oh, that's a good idea let's let's see how they work and you know I don't think that necessarily the the purpose is any different but the practice of the purpose is definitely matured. Mm.